Okay. Praise God. Good evening and welcome your brothers and sisters to our webinar on the discipline of the Lord. So even as we begin, we want to apologize that uh, for all the delays. And, uh, I, and let's, let's begin by signing ourselves in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and we bless you. We give you all the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. You alone are worthy of all praise, blessing and honor, wisdom and thanksgiving, power and might and strength belong to you, Lord. And we delight in giving you, in blessing you, in honoring you, in worshiping you. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit, we just surrender. We ask you to take complete control, Lord. You are our helper. Take control. Take control. We are never without help because we have you. And because we have you, we have all the help we need. Teach us to rely on you, Lord, more and more, more and more. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Together. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Surrender today, right now, dear brothers and sisters. Surrender yourself completely to the Holy Spirit of God. May the Holy Spirit take complete control of every one of our lives. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Take control of this time. Take control of this time. Take control of our devices, Lord. Take control of our lives, of all our internet connections. Take control of our lives. Devi Aralaya Shekhu Arba. Shaba Nama 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 Ruwa. Devi Aralaya Seina. Om Neki Aralaya Shenu. Kiri Aruwe. Kiri Aralaya Sena Tretu Kanyaba. Om Neku Aruwe. Yes, sweet spirit of God, we just surrender to you, take complete control. And in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I bind any spirit that is trying to hinder the session for any one of us in any way. And I set it bound to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ. I command in the name of Jesus. All our devices, our internet connections to function perfectly. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for a perfectly uninterrupted, blessed and anointed session. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So praise God and welcome once again, dear brothers and sisters, to our webinar on the discipline of the Lord. Okay? So this uh, is it's not a very easy, easy topic to speak about. Okay, because the word discipline itself, you know, the moment you hear the word discipline, you realize, okay, when we do something wrong, we are disciplined. We are disciplined. And that is, that is exactly what the Lord does. When we get into wrong patterns of behavior, when we get into sinful habits and become so 
uh, you know, we become so super spiritual that we don't even realize what we are doing is wrong. That, you know, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to us continually and yet we have not been listening. That is the time the Holy Spirit has to probably give us a rap on our knuckles. A rap on our knuckles. That is what this teaching is about when we get disciplined by the Lord. Okay? So, this basic te this teaching is basically a study of Hebrews chapter 12, verses 4 to 13. Okay? And, and the most important, the most important uh, lesson that I hope every one of us learns from this teaching is God disciplines his sons and daughters. Okay? And he disciplines us because he loves us. He loves us. So it is very important for us to recognize if we are being disciplined, why we're being disciplined, and how to receive discipline. So there is so much in this teaching that I'm going to be doing it in two parts. Okay, I'll do it in two parts. Today I'll do half the talk, and next Friday we will be doing the second half of the teaching. So please be there. Please be there. And you can even share this teaching with your friends. Make sure that they watch it before they join us for the next session. And because of the topic, we have also, you know, I will try and finish the teaching in like 50 minutes, 50, 55 minutes. So, and we will have at least 10 minutes or 15 minutes of Q&A because of the topic, okay? Because of the topic, I know there will be a lot of questions that many of us can, can have. Therefore, we've decided to do it this way, okay? So the objectives of this teaching are fourfold, okay? There is a struggle against sin. There is, there should be, rather, there should be a struggle against sin. So that point and the next point, the purpose of the Lord's discipline will, what, will be what we are covering today. And the next teaching will be on how does God discipline us and why does God discipline us, okay? So there will be a little bit of overlap. So, you know, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't be, you know, too, too uh, you know, uh, a stickler. For rules it's it, that's not the way it's supposed to be uh, so we we are going to be dealing with the struggle against sin and the purpose of the lord's discipline in today's teaching okay so the basic scripture that we are beginning with yeah. is hebrews chapter 12 verse 4 where the writer to the hebrew says in struggling against sin you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood to the point of shedding your blood, brothers and sisters, this is the way you and I are called to struggle. The word struggle is alternately, uh, you know, another word that can be used is wrestle. Wrestle. So we are not like, you know, struggling in that sense. We are wrestling against sin. We are called to wrestle against sin. And the reason, the reason the Lord disciplines us is because we don't resist sin the way we are supposed to, to the point of shedding your blood, to the point of shedding your blood. And there was only one person who resisted sin this way. And we want to keep our eyes fixed on him, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, Jesus himself. Okay? So, Jesus was the only one who really wrestled against sin, resisted to the point of shedding his blood, shed all his blood and did not give in to sin. That's why he is able to stand as our high priest. He's able to stand and plead for us, intercede for us because he's been through it all and he won and he won. So he is the only one who can give us the grace to resist sin and not give in. Okay, in Luke chapter 22, verses 44 to 56. Okay, this is the passage about Jesus's agony in the garden. And, and uh, Luke, uh, you know, uh, recalls this. And he says, and being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Okay, so this is how Jesus resisted sin to the point of shedding his blood. What was the sin he was resisting there? The sin of 
doing his own thing having his own way up you know versus the will of the father that's why when he was wrestling with the will of god when it came to this point he knew crucifixion his death are going to be inevitable he was faced he was you know looking them in the face when he was praying like this and through his suffering you no know, again in hebrews chapter 5 verses uh, verse 8 it says uh, he suffered although he was a son he learned obedience through suffering what suffering did jesus and endure of course all the persecution that he went through and all because of his humanity all the struggles that he went through and ultimately he struggled here he struggled here he he suffered by to die to his own will and say yes to the will of the father okay and that was the time his sweat became great drops of blood and of course he continued to shed his blood at the scourging and at the crucifixion until not one drop was left when the soldiers pierced his side with the lance the last drop of his blood was poured out for us and he was the one who struggled against sin rather than giving in rather than giving so the key to understand this the rest of this passage and this whole teaching is here brothers and sisters we are all called to resist sin in the same way in the same way that's what that's why we have been given the holy spirit we've been given the grace of god to resist sin and jesus is our perfect example jesus is our perfect example and he was willing to even you know he began he began shedding his blood right there in the garden as he was struggling to embrace the will of god but thank you jesus that you said yes you said yes to the will of god and you resisted sin for our sake to become the perfect high priest for us thank you lord so we brothers and sisters don't resist the sin resist sin the same way and we fall into it we fall into it we get trapped the enemy you know tempts us and we succumb and we succumb so this is not a teaching you know for us oh yes we are sinners we are sinners just you know to condemn ourselves no this is not for us to look at ourselves our teachings are always to look at jesus to stand in him to stand in christ and to receive grace and mercy to help in time of need so the need for discipline this is the reason the lord disciplines us because we sin and because he loves us so get that straight please get that straight he disciplines us because we sin and we fall into sinful patterns and we don't fight it enough sometimes we just you know succumb and we just we just give in we just stay there and the lord loves us so much he will not let us stay there because he loves us he makes sure that he comes after us he comes after us even with a rod sometimes with a rod proverbs 29 verse 15 says i'm paraphrasing it spare the rod and spoil the child how many times have we heard that and how few parents are willing to do that nowadays so few parents are willing to do that they are so scared to discipline their children and in some countries it's against the law so you discipline your child you're in jail what a sad state imagine a child without discipline what a disgrace that child is going to be what a disgrace the child is going to be and at times yes it is important to use when children are very small they are only scared of the stick of the rod that is why we have to be willing to stand for what the word of god tells us and to remember that in the same way because he loves us he disciplines us and does not want us to continue in sin god's discipline okay another word for discipline is chastisement which means punishment and it also means rebuke or correction it comes to everyone everyone who sincerely trying to follow the lord all of us will experience it all of us do experience it we need to recognize it his correction in fact is a sign of his love for his children and we are not to lose heart when we experience his correction okay and discipline okay the word discipline it means 
the practice of training people to obey rules okay so discipline is you know when when you when you're put into a regimen you know where you are continually expected to follow rules to obey rules or a code of acceptable behavior okay a code of acceptable behavior and what happens in case you don't accept you don't you are not able to follow that code of behavior you can be punished using punishment to correct disobedience okay so that is what discipline means discipline essentially means training to obey rules or a code of behavior and if a person fails to obey they will be punished they will be punished so that their disobedience can be corrected okay in the school of the holy spirit to brothers and sisters every one of us has enrolled here i know many of us will be thinking oh i'm done with school i'm done with college i'm done with my studies and maybe you know if if some of us have struggled through school and all they're like thank god i'm not there anymore but you and i are all in the school of the holy spirit and the holy spirit is our principal is the teacher is our mentor is our guide is also the one who disciplines us is also the one who disciplines us god the holy spirit is the one who is the sanctifier therefore disciplining us is part of the holy spirit's responsibility all these days we're just you know so wonderfully like when we when we talk about the holy spirit we say oh he's our comforter he's our counselor paraclete wonderful enabler helper our wisdom our guide our teacher all wonderful things how does it feel to hear that he's the one who also disciplines us and he doesn't take his responsibilities lightly the holy spirit is very diligent very sincere about being our sanctifier and the one who has been given the responsibility to discipline us okay so when does god discipline us when does he discipline us discipline is training and that training involves both positive and negative aspects okay so when when does god discipline he disciplines all the time okay all the time he disciplines us all the time and and uh, what does he do there are positive and negative aspects to the training the positive side is when the holy spirit teaches us guides us that's the positive side that's definitely the much better better way to experience discipline but the negative aspect is when the holy spirit actually rebukes us corrects us gives us a little rap on our knuckles if required i remember i remember when i experienced this you know about seven almost seven years ago when i started praying like this in tongues continually and i started walking in this absolute amazing intimacy with the holy spirit continually i would hear the holy spirit speak to me and uh, and and that morning also as i took michael to his uh, you know his therapy center there was this lady who used to bring her son her son was about uh, 12 or 13 years old his name is danush and i used to speak to her in kannada okay because she was more comfortable speaking kannada and i used to speak to her in kannada and my kannada was not so bad not so bad at all and uh, i would talk to her every day ask her how danush is doing and everything and uh, the holy spirit very clearly told me to pray over him to pray over the boy because it was painful it was so painful to see the mother because he was 12 or 13 years old growing well physically but he couldn't walk he couldn't walk so the mother used to literally you know drag him carry him almost on her back of course she brought him by car and from there from the gate to the building she would literally you know carry the child who was almost her size her height her weight and everything and she would you know struggle with him and she would take him inside and the lord said pray over him and i said lord i am not comfortable praying in kannada what was my problem just stubbornness just stubbornness all i had to do was rely on the holy spirit but i refused i just refused i said lord no i cannot pray in kannada so i'm not going to pray for the child and instantly brothers and sisters i felt a kind of you know a cutting off a cutting off within me 
But of course, I didn't notice it. I didn't notice it. And I was like, you know, I continue to act very normal with the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit was giving me the silent treatment, not responding. I'm like talking, 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 and no response. Asking questions, no response. Seeking guidance, no response. And I knew something was wrong, but I, I, did, I forgot what I had done. I had just forgotten this. So it continued like this for one hour, one day, two days. And I told Colin, after two days, I said, uh, Colin, I, I don't know what happened, but I'm not sensing the presence of the Lord anymore. I know he is there with me, but he's not speaking to me. And Colin knew, Colin knew even then, you know, that, that I was walking in an amazing intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I used to keep on telling him, the Lord said this, the Lord said this. And here I was not experiencing anything. He didn't know what to say. He didn't know what to say. He didn't say anything. And I continued like that. Another two days, three days went. And then I realized, okay, this is not, this is not, you know, something I can just ignore. I went back running to the Holy Spirit. That's the best part. That's the best part about, about the Lord who loves us. When we sin, we should have the courage to run back to him because we're sinning against him. But whoever we sin against, we need to run to him because he's the one who will show us our sin. The Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And the Holy Spirit gives us grace to resist, to overcome. I went back to the Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, I know I've done something wrong. I couldn't even remember. Imagine my hardness of heart. I couldn't even remember what happened. Then instantly when I repented, returned to the Lord, immediately the Holy Spirit said, remember I told you to pray over him? And I knew, okay, yes, Lord, I disobeyed. I disobeyed. And then I said, okay, Lord, I'm definitely going to pray over him. Tomorrow when I take Michael to the therapy center, I will surely pray for him. And the next day, I was a little nervous because he they are Hindus. And, and they know, they know, of course, that we are Christian. And, uh, and then I, as I was talking to his mom, I asked her, I said, uh, do you mind if I can, uh, if I pray over Danush? She said, of course you can pray over him. Look at her openness. Look at her openness. And I was the one who was hesitating. And then I also asked her, I said, you know, I'm more comfortable praying in English. Do you mind if I pray in English? She said, not at all. I can actually understand English, but I'm not that comfortable speaking English. So she understood every word and I prayed over him beautifully and I know, and I know, I pray over the child, I pray for the child, even till today, every day I pray for him. And I know the words that we speak will not return void. And immediately, connection was restored, dear brothers and sisters. The connection was restored. And I started experiencing the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. So from that time onward, if I ever don't experience, you know, if I, if I feel there is something missing, I know, I know what the problem is. It's never with the Holy Spirit. It's always with me. And I just immediately repent and say, okay, Lord, the Lord will take me back to the time or the moment when I disobeyed or, you know, ignored his voice or something like that and bring me back to him, bring me back to me, to him with repentance. Okay. So this, 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 there are two aspects to, uh, this discipline, which is a positive aspect and a negative aspect, brothers and sisters. And so, and so, you know, the positive aspect is when we learn as the Holy Spirit teaches us through the word. The negative aspect is when the Holy Spirit corrects us in some other way, in some other way. Okay. So part of the discipline is simply guiding someone to follow certain rules or to observe certain behaviors. Okay. So the Holy Spirit, you know, now, now that we have said yes to the Lord, we have made Jesus the Lord of our lives. We are, we belong to him. So now we have come into a new way of life, a new way of life. We cannot continue to live like we used to before we knew the Lord or before we, uh, you know, uh, knew, knew the Holy Spirit's guidance in our life. We, we can't continue to, you know, uh, gossip and slander and uh, give, uh, give bribes and, uh, you know, uh, just do every kind of evil that the, that the world is involved in. We cannot. We can't be just addicted to our, uh, you know, uh, social media, uh, mobile, or or uh, our TV, uh, TV uh, serials, whatever, whatever it is, we cannot continue to live. So we're coming into a new way of life, and the Holy Spirit is the one who guides us in this way, guiding us to follow certain rules and observe certain behaviors. 
ideally the holy spirit wants to discipline us by helping us to develop discipline he wants us to become disciplined people he wants us to become disciplined sons and daughters of god without discipline we cannot be disciples so as we continue in the school of the holy spirit he trains us he trains us almost as if we are army you know we are soldiers of christ and we are we are on the battlefield and the training is happening on the battlefield for soldiers at least your know, training happens happens in their camps but for us it's on the job it's on the job so we need to be aware and sensitive to the holy spirit's guidance continually because the holy spirit is training us continually so we need to okay these are the positive aspects of discipline where we need to work on the discipline of our mind our spirit is renewed since we are in christ we are new creation our spirit is completely renewed but our spirit has to influence our mind we need to consciously discipline our minds as 2 corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says we take captive every thought to make it obedient to christ this is a follow up teaching brothers and sisters to the last webinar we conducted about 2 weeks ago on obedience to god obedience is the key to god's heart remember and part of that obedience is also to make our thoughts obey thoughts should be obeyed obedient to christ so we don't allow our mind to just think whatever it wants we discipline our mind we take charge of negative thoughts depression anxiety fear so we take we take authority in the name of jesus i'm sure you have heard so many teachings on the renewal of the mind that is what we're talking about so the discipline of the mind or the renewal of the mind is part of the training that the holy spirit continually subjects us to through the word getting more and more of the word into us we are able to yield to the spirit and so that we don't we are not moved by our senses but only by the spirit and by the word so we don't give in we don't give up we don't give in we don't you know just listen to everything all the negative speech all the negative words media and this and that and get all anxious and worried no we take charge of all these things we know how to do it and even uh, recently colin gave a teaching on decreeing and and legislating we are in charge brothers and sisters let's not forget that so we need to take authority in jesus name and exercise our god given responsibility to be kings and priests here on earth so we're not supposed to be anxious and worried about the situation but we are supposed to take charge of the situation we are stewards we are god's ambassadors and we allow only the spirit and the word to move us not negative situation circumstances or being carnal being carnal being you know of the world okay so along with discipline of the mind i'm not speaking too much about these two aspects but we also need to discipline our body we also need physical discipline physical discipline is very very important it's a very important part of being part of the school of the holy spirit so these are the positive aspects so when we take control of our minds we take control of our bodies then the holy spirit will not have to give us a rap when we fall when we fail and when we sin so discipline is very very important to hinder to to uh, help us to resist sin so in 1 corinthians 9 verse 24 st paul says do you not know that in a race all the runners run but only one gets the prize run in such a way as to get the prize run to win run to win so this is the context this is the context even of today's passage st paul is saying we are in a race one fine day if i'm not an athlete i just cannot say okay i'm going to take part in the olympics not possible not possible we need to be diligently training every day and even those who diligently train not everyone's going to win the prize there's only one who's going to run in such a way that they win that they win the prize that they win the prize and so saint paul is urging us you know he says don't just be mediocre don't be mediocre don't be like you know oh yes i am you know th this is a marathon first of all it's a marathon it takes all our life we're running all our life so we're not called to you know just do a short sprint and then collapse no we're called to be steady daily yielding to the holy spirit so that the holy spirit continually guides us so that we can run in such a way that we win that we win 
Okay. Okay. The next few verses. All athletes are disciplined. What does the word discipline mean? In other versions, has strict training. They go through strict training. Imagine the sacrifices they make. The sacrifices. They wake up early every morning. They eat healthy every day. They, you know, drink lots of water. They are so disciplined. They practice and practice and practice. And this is this is what we are called to, dear brothers and sisters. Not to be lazy. Not to just, you know, be slack, slothful. We need to be disciplined in our training. They do it, okay? So Paul is saying they do it for a price that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal reward, an eternal price. How much more we should be diligent. We should yield to the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to discipline us, to discipline our bodies. Then Paul is saying, so I run with purpose on every step. So every step that I take, every day, every moment of the day, I know my purpose. I know my purpose. God is sanctifying me. He's making sure I live here on earth like Jesus. And I'm not just shadow boxing. He's saying, I'm not fooling myself. I'm not pretending. I'm not just trying to fool somebody. But I, and see how, how hard he is on himself. Not saying Paul is so hard. He says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should, so that it doesn't do whatever it wants. That is a tendency with the body. If you don't discipline it, the body will take charge. The flesh will take charge. Galatians 5.19 says, do not gratify the flesh. Do not gratify the flesh. That is what we end up doing if we don't, you know, spend time disciplining our bodies. So, so in the school of the Holy Spirit, see what St. Paul says, otherwise I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. And this is, this is of course, a very hard, you know, a harsh Warning to preachers, but every one of us, brothers and sisters, is a preacher in one way or the other. Maybe you're preaching to your children. Maybe you're preaching to your spouse. Maybe you're preaching with words. Maybe you're preaching with your witness. But if you are not disciplined, if you're not consistent, if you're not yielding continually to the Holy Spirit, what will happen? After preaching to them, you and I ourselves could be disqualified. Disqualified for the prize. For the prize. So we need to continually yield to spiritual discipline. Prayer, the sacraments, giving, our tithes and all our offerings, all of these. They need to become, you know, a part of our daily life. These are spiritual disciplines. Mental discipline. The only way we recommend disciplining the mind is by studying the word of God. You can do a lot of other things. You can try. But what works best? Studying the word. Study the word. And not just hear the word. Be doers of the word. And to be a doer of the word, you have to study the word. Be faithful to prayer meetings. Be faithful to, you know, uh, attending all, uh, all, all, all kinds of sessions where you are getting input. Where you're getting input. And you're allowing it to transform your mind. You're allowing it to transform your mind. Be mentored. Submit to a mentor. Submit to a spiritual director. They are in God's place to guide you. To guide you. So that is also part of our mental discipline. Why, what are they trying to work out? They are working on your mind. They are working on the way you think. Primarily. Because when you change the way you think, you can change the way you live. You can change the way you live. You can change the way you speak by changing the way you think. Bodily discipline. By fasting, fasting from food, fasting from social media. And other things which are bad for us. Excesses. Excesses of any kind. Bad for us. So we are called brothers and sisters. To be disciplined. Be disciplined. As we yield to the Holy Spirit. Do we take time. For physical exercise every day. Maybe go for a walk. Jog if you have the you know, energy for it. Or you exercise. Stretch at home. Do aerobics. Do something. Keep yourself fit. Keep yourself healthy. We have a long life in good health that God wants us to live. So we need to take care of our bodies. We need to discipline our bodies. Have a healthy, you know, pattern. Sleep pattern. Uh, eating habits. Food, you know, exercise uh, patterns. Discipline. Study time. Of course, enjoy time for your leisure. 
you know, enjoy with your children, with your family, with your spouse, travel, do what you have to do, but continually yielding to the Holy Spirit and allowing the Spirit of God to discipline us. So when does God discipline us, dear brothers and sisters? He disciplines us because another part, the negative aspect of discipline is he, he gives us a reproof to correct disobedience. Those are the positive sides. When we discipline our mind, discipline our body, we will continually, you know, be in good health and peace and we can walk in victory and authority. But the other part is when we experience reproof, which is to correct disobedience. That's what I experienced. That's what I experienced when I refused to pray for this child. You know, even though I was like walking in such intimacy with the Holy Spirit, utter outright disobedience. So that's why the Holy Spirit had to be very firm with me. Both aspects of discipline can be tough, okay? The daily, diligent, controlling of our mind, of our thoughts, you know, renewing our mind, prayer, studying the word, being faithful to the Eucharist, tithing, fasting, you know, bodily discipline, all of these, that can be tough too. But being corrected through chastening or punishment is definitely tougher. It's definitely tougher, brothers and sisters. That is why, that is why it's very important for us to recognize when the Lord is chastening us, when the Lord is disciplining us so that we can go back to him and seek his guidance. Lord, what did I do wrong? Where did I fall? And I didn't even realize it. So it's, you know, it's good to allow the Holy Spirit to discipline us in the easy way by helping us to develop discipline. But if we fail, if we fall, He's always faithful, our sanctifier, to correct us, to chasten us, to even punish us. And although this is difficult, he is there to enable us. But you and I, brothers and sisters, cannot be disciples without discipline. Tell yourself, I cannot be a disciple without discipline. Both aspects, positive and negative. And negative. Okay? So Hebrews, coming back to the key scripture, the verses, Hebrews 12, verses 5 and 6. It says, my son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you. This is a quote from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. So the writer to the Hebrews is quoting Proverbs. And he says, when you experience the Lord's discipline, do not make light. What does make light mean? No, don't, don't ignore it. Don't just, you know, say, oh, it's nothing great. Yeah, I'm not experiencing the Lord's presence, but I don't think it's a big deal. I'm sure he'll start talking to me again. No, it was not, it was not a small thing. It was a big deal. Disobedience to the Holy Spirit is a very big deal. So the, the, the word of God is telling us, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. Or the other extreme, do not lose heart when he rebukes you. So even this could happen. Either we take it too lightly, or we get too bogged down, too discouraged and say, oh, the Lord is being, you know, disciplining me. I, I don't know what I did. Most of us, the that is the problem. We don't go to the Holy Spirit. We don't walk in intimacy asking the Holy Spirit, what, Lord, what did I do? Where did I fall? We have fallen and we don't even know. And we don't even know. So we need to walk in intimacy with the Holy Spirit so that we don't lose heart. So, and, then, and many people say, oh, this doesn't work. You know, yeah, initially the Holy Spirit was talking a lot to me and helping me and, you know, but now uh, I don't, I, I'm, I feel, you know, he's not really uh, speaking to me. I can't hear his voice. Why? Because of sin. And you have fallen so badly that you have, you know, just lost heart. I said, okay, yeah, maybe that is just for a season. The rest of my life, I just have to struggle. No. No, brothers and sisters, don't lose heart when he rebukes you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. You know, when I'm disciplining my child, I'm very close to him. I'm close to her. I'm standing right there, probably with a stick, but I'm standing very close, very close. And that's how the Holy Spirit is. He's always so close to us. And he disciplines us because he loves us. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child or his son. Okay, the Holy Spirit punishes us. Because I remember, you know, I remember when uh, Michael, Marika, both of them, you know, I had to, I had to be very firm with them. 
at different times. Take the stick. Take the stick. Even for Michael, it's hard. It's hard. Because I know he's a child with special needs. And yet, the moment we discipline him, his behavior changes. He becomes so peaceful and so calm. Because discipline is a boundary for him. It contains his negative behavior. I went for years without disciplining him. Without disciplining him. And he went berserk. He went berserk, brothers and sisters. But I, I thought, oh, how can I discipline him? He doesn't understand. No, he understands. He understands. When he sees the stick now, he understands. Immediately his behavior changes. All children need discipline. And all children of God need discipline. That's what the Holy Spirit is telling us today. And Marika too. You know, so I, I've got experience in both, both uh, areas. Disciplining Michael, who's a child with special needs, and Marika, who's a normal child with normal issues, normal problems, normal discipline, normal discipline. Of course, it's much easier with Marika because her understanding is much greater and she understands, she obeys much more easily. But with Michael, more consistency, more consistency. Because the sooner we discipline him, we find that, you know, much quicker, we find his behavior changes. Okay, that's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. So, have you experienced the discipline or the chastening or the punishment of the Lord, brothers and sisters? Have you experienced it? Are you looking at your life now and say, okay, yes, um, I'm sure, I'm sure, yeah, this experience must have been the discipline of the Lord. I will also specify, you know, I will give more scriptures toward the, in the, the second half on how the Lord disciplines us. So then we can very easily recognize his discipline. Okay, so are you going through it now? Maybe you can already recognize it. Are you going through it now? Can you recognize it when you, when he is disciplining you? When he is correcting you? When he is chastening you? When he's punishing you even? That's why I struggled when I prepared this talk. I said, Lord, is this, do you really work like this? And the word of God is saying he punishes us, he chastens us because he loves us. And then the Lord reminded me of so many instances where I experienced the chastening of the Lord, where he was correcting me. And one of those instances I've shared with you, I said, yes, this is a very serious teaching. This is a very serious topic. All of us need to hear this. All of us need to hear this. And this is a sign, brothers and sisters, that God has not given up on us. He's not washed his hands off. Pilate washed his hands off, not Jesus, not the Holy Spirit. He will never wash his hands of us. He's faithful and he will always, he will always discipline us, never giving up on us, correcting us until we change. Hebrews 12 verse 7 says, If you end your chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father does not chasten? Whom the father does not chasten? Which child is there who has grown up without discipline? I'm sure it will be very obvious. They'll be reckless, miserable, absolutely making a mess of their lives because they have not been chastened. They've not been corrected at the right time, at the right age, and for all the right reasons. So as we yield to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is taking responsibility for our growth. Yes, we have to take responsibility. Yes. But the Holy Spirit does not give up his part, his part in our lives. Faithfully chastens us and disciplines us. This discipline is for his legitimate Christless children who we are in Christ. We are his legitimate children. We're not, we're not illegitimate. We're not bastards. That's what the word of God says. He's treating us as his sons and daughters in Christ Jesus. So if you and I don't experience discipline or don't recognize we are experiencing discipline, then we are being, you know, we are living like illegitimate children because God never fails to discipline us when we yield to the Holy Spirit. And as we undergo God's discipline, we can rejoice in at least one fact. God is treating us as his true children, as his true children. And the whole purpose of discipline is, brothers and sisters, to make us more and more like him. To make us more and more like him. That's why we need to yield. That's why we need to surrender. And he does not want sin to destroy us. He does not want sin to destroy us. Which is what, which is what will happen if we don't yield to the discipline of the Lord. Okay? 
Next verse. But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers, then your illegitimate children are not sons. We don't discipline the neighbor's children. We don't discipline someone else's kids, but only our own. That's what the writer is saying. Seeing the fact that God is disciplining you is because he considers you his very own. You and I are his very own. If we were unbelievers, he doesn't go discipline unbelievers. He disciplines us believers who are in Christ, treating us as his sons and daughters. He corrects us because we belong to him. Maybe we've been ignoring the Holy Spirit for a long time. Because we, you know, we, we couldn't even imagine, oh, is this, is this what is happening? And if today, if today you're, you're experiencing the tug of the Holy Spirit saying, yes, there has been sin, you have fallen, get up, rise, we've slipped into sinful patterns, recognize them, recognize them, the Holy Spirit wants to keep on sanctifying us, making us more like Jesus. Maybe we even become blind, spiritually blind in many areas. Sometimes, you know, we get so much of the word into us, doing nothing about it, doing nothing about it. We are not being doers of the word. If we don't do the word, we are just getting spiritual indigestion. And we become blind. We become blind. The word of God is supposed to open our eyes, open our ears, our spiritual eyes, ears, open our hearts, so that we can do the word. Otherwise, we become blind. Maybe we are heading toward hardness of heart, repeated disobedience. That's what, that's what the Pharisees and the scribes became guilty of. Hardness of heart because of years and centuries of disobeying, disobedience to God. Disobedience to God. That is hardness of heart. That is the unpardonable sin, brothers and sisters. When you continuously ignore the Holy Spirit and reach a place where, you know, then you can't hear him anymore. Can't hear him anymore. You can't, you know, it really, really takes absolute grace in that situation for you to come back to him. Okay? Moreover, next verse. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? See what the writers say. We've all had, you know, we've all had human fathers who disciplined us. How many of you can say, okay, unless, unless by the, you know, uh, in a very sad situation, you grew up without a dad. You grew up without a father. And so your mother had to play both roles. Otherwise, usually, Children are more scared of the dad than they are of the mother because the father has been entrusted with the role of disciplining. And in our, in our day, in our time, both of us need to be involved. So both parents need to be involved. So I'm not saying only fathers. But in those days, in the writers, in the time of, of the letter to the Hebrews, it was mainly fathers. Okay, fathers and mothers, what the, what the word is saying is they are imperfect and therefore their discipline is also imperfect. They don't get it right. You know, even when their intentions are always right, they want to correct the negative behavior. But very often, you know, they discipline sometimes when they shouldn't discipline. Something you should just let it be. A child will learn. Maybe they're too young. As they grow older, maturity will come. They will understand. So if you discipline, when you're not supposed to discipline, it becomes too harsh. Or you fail to discipline when you should. So then you become too soft. Too soft. Neither of these conditions is good. Or you're disciplined in the wrong way. Because, you know, often parents are just, you know, when, when you're disciplining, usually you are angry, which is okay. But if you allow anger to take over you, that anger will control you. So you're not really thinking straight. And you end up screaming, shouting. And then often as children grow, they will scream, they will shout. So it's not working. It's not working right. So discipline should be done in a very beautiful, calm way. That's how the Holy Spirit works. So we need to learn how to discipline from the Holy Spirit. Okay? That's the reason for Paul's admonition in Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. He says, fathers, do not exasperate your children so they won't become discouraged. Because excessive discipline will make a child discouraged, will cause them to be discouraged. So our God, our Father, will never, you know, exasperate us with his discipline. The Holy Spirit knows exactly how much we can take and how much we need. So we make sure we don't get discouraged. So we need to be diligent. In contrast, human fathers, weak, fail, but God is good and God is perfect. 
His discipline is good because he is good. He doesn't do it too hard, too soft. Therefore, we must submit eagerly to his loving discipline. To his loving discipline because he's doing it out of love and he does it perfectly. Next verse. They disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good. Okay? For our eternal good. Brothers and sisters, God is not just thinking of us, of our life here on earth. He wants to make sure we are ready for eternity with him. It begins here on earth. I think, you know, people who don't uh, submit to the discipline of the Lord, longer time in purgatory. Truly, truly longer time in purgatory. And, and you know, our parents disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good. We can trust him. So that, what's the purpose? We may share in his holiness. Holiness is the nature of God. Through discipline, he wants to make us holy as he is holy. As he is holy, he wants to make us holy. In contrast, this is, he does it for our good. It's not for him. He doesn't need to discipline us, but he loves us. Therefore, he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. Matthew 5 verse 48 says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. How? How can we be perfect? Only when we allow the Holy Spirit to perfect us. He's the perfecter. He's a sanctifier. So as we yield to the Spirit, it yields. The next verse, it says, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So regular discipline, correction of the Holy Spirit, the positive aspects and even the harder negative aspects. Experiencing reproof, reproof, rebuke, correction of the Holy Spirit. What is the final outcome? The peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. His nature, peace abides in us. Righteousness will be seen in us. And this is this is a hard part, yes? So all, all of us know this. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Discipline is painful, yes. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Same words, same words. It is painful. Be willing to endure. Be willing to submit. Be willing to yield to the Holy Spirit so that the peaceful fruit of righteousness will, you know, we'll have an abundant harvest. A harvest where, you know, the nature of Christ will continually be seen in us. We'll be sanctified, made holy, just as he is. So God's discipline is preventive or corrective. An example of preventive discipline, okay? There are two ways he disciplines us, preventive or corrective. Preventive discipline. Psalm 94 verses 12 to 13. Blessed is the one you discipline, Lord, the one you teach from your law. You grant them relief from days of trouble. See what the psalmist is saying. He says, blessed is the one who disciplines, who is disciplined by the Lord. And he teaches them from his law. From his law. If we are willing to learn the word, study the word, and pattern our lives accordingly, then we are blessed. We are blessed. And this is the positive, you know, wonderful preventive discipline. He changes us through his word so that we have relief from days of trouble. No days of trouble. Because we have been disciplining our lives and building it on the word, on the word of God. He grants us relief from days of trouble. And as soon as we say yes to the Lord, when we are born again into the family of God, when we start walking in, pers in a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus as our Savior, with God as our Father, God begins to discipline us. So we immediately begin to understand and learn the word and adjust our lives accordingly. That's ideally what we're supposed to do. That's why when we attend a retreat and we are touched by the word and transformed, how can we sustain this this transformation that God is doing in us, only if we regularly go for prayer meetings, keep studying the word, have a you know, dedicated time of prayer where you allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Follow, follow all that the Holy Spirit teaches you. So when we adjust our lives accordingly, we begin to experience the preventive discipline, which is definitely better. But God's discipline also comes when we sin. Here, the chastisement is meant to be corrective. So when we sin, God corrects us. David, in one of his penitential psalms, expresses his desire that God 
moderate the severity of the punishment. We don't know exactly what the reason was, but David was exper experiencing the punishment, the rebuke of the Lord in this psalm. Okay, Psalm 38 verses 1 to 4. He says, Lord, do not rebuke me in, my, in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. See the words that we are, we are looking at today. He rebukes us. And David is like, Lord, don't do it in your anger. He doesn't do it to us in his anger because we have Christ in between where all the wrath fell on him. All the anger of God fell on him. Or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me. Your hand has come down on, on me. See how beautifully he describes what he's experiencing. He says, because of your wrath, there is no help in my body. He has walked out of the umbrella. Remember, obedience is an umbrella. So when you disobey, you're out of the umbrella of God's protection. So maybe you're experiencing sickness in your body because of disobedience to God. There is no health in my body. There's no soundness in my bones because of my sin. All clearly explained. David doesn't have any doubt what the problem is. The Holy Spirit so beautifully has spoken to him. And he knows why. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. Like a burden too heavy to bear. So brothers and sisters, this is the corrective aspect. So this is when we have walked away walked away from God, like the prodigal son. How was he in the far off country? Maybe he was like this. He doesn't give us too many descriptions, but surely he was experiencing this, being cut off from the life of God, from the love of God. No food, no water, no shelter, nothing. That is what he probably experienced. So in conclusion of part one, dear brothers and sisters, there is a struggle against sin. We all need to wrestle against sin just the way Jesus said. Because if we don't, we will end up experiencing his correction. In the school of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit wants to teach us. And he wants us to, you know, he wants to teach us and guide us through the word. Primarily through the word. That is preventive. As the psalmist says, no, in Psalm 94, he says, Blessed is the one whom you discipline, whom you correct through your law. Whom you correct through your law. If we are willing to learn through the word, we will not have to ex experience the rebuke. We need to develop healthy patterns of mental and physical discipline. That's what the Holy Spirit is in us for. And we are discovering the purpose of the Lord's discipline. The Lord disciplines us because he loves us. He chastens us because he considers us his sons and daughters. So brothers and sisters, I want to urge you to please attend even next week. And I also want to invite you to, uh, you know, if you can um, join us for our second National Catholic Leadership School. Okay, the dates are 21st to 23rd of uh, October, Friday to Sunday. It's here in Bangalore. So if you are able to come, please come and please circulate, circulate this flyer in all your circles so that more and more people will be able to experience, uh, you know, a good teaching to build leaders, which is a big dearth in the church. Okay, so let's conclude with a word of prayer and then we will have a little time of Q&A. Father, we want to thank you and praise you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us, Lord. Thank you for reminding us that we need to wrestle against sin the way Jesus did to the point of shedding blood. We need to yield continually to your Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, we surrender to you. We know we are in your school. Guide us, correct us, Lord. Teach us the word and transform us that we will develop healthy patterns of mental and physical discipline. And when we do sin, when we sin, we will yield again to you, to your chastening, to your correction, and come back to you with all our hearts. In the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.